What is up everybody, Luke Film Boss here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Trolls Band Together. Now, before I get into this review, I want to kind of give you uh, insight onto what I think of the Trolls franchise as a whole. I did not really care for the first film. Like, there's some good stuff there. I did like quite a bit of it, but overall I found there to be more negatives for me personally than there was positives. First off, I just didn't like the Bergens. Uh, the humor was kind of too stupid and kiddish for me, like the poops and fart jokes and all that stupid stuff. And once again, the Bergens I didn't really like. Like, they weren't awful in every scene, but overall I just didn't really care for them. But overall, there was really catchy music. I liked how they used music in the movie. The trolls can be funny at times. I think more so uh, Branch and Poppy can be funny. The rest of them were kind of just annoying in that first film. And... The more I thought about it, it's like, you know, a lot of these trolls are just jerks to each other. Like, especially Poppy is just kind of very, you know, selfish and like just over invasive, especially towards Branch. And it's like, OK, like she's likable enough, but like, come on, like we're just supposed to like accept all of these bad decisions she makes and then watch as she makes bad decisions and then makes Branch pay for it. It's like. Okay, that's weird. I didn't really care for that first film. But I think some of the best scenes and the best moments from the whole franchise are in that first film. Like the whole True Colors sequence and song. That was like one of the best moments. That was a really heartfelt moment in that movie and in this franchise. And that brings us to Trolls World Tour where they have a similar moment. But it's kind of almost a moment that is mimicking the true colors moment from the first film where all of the trolls lose their color and they're all kind of down and then they start singing a song and they get their color back it's like didn't we see that in the first movie i was like when i was like watching the trailers for the third third movie i'm like okay i i i'm just saying right now if this movie's finale ends with all the trolls losing their color and then singing a song to get their color back i'm rage quitting and leaving the movie theater so I'm not going to spoil how I ended, but I did watch the whole Trolls Band Together movie, so that should give a little bit of insight to how that ended out. But just back to Trolls World Tour, I thought it was a step up above the first film. It was a very fun, solid, less annoying, less stupid humor movie. There was some dumb humor in some moments that are just like, oh, come on, give me a break. It's like, it's not a perfect movie, but it was very fun. And I liked how it utilizes music even more so. It makes music more of a focus of the plot. And I like how they use it um, for the messaging. Like, even if you want to look at it at face value, just like, oh, there's different kind of music and we can all love different kinds of music. We can like, maybe like one specific kind or we can like all kinds of music. Like, it doesn't matter. That's your you know, personal opinion. And there's a, there's something beautiful about being able to, you know, have different styles of music. Like it, you can't just discriminate and say one kind is better than the other. And I like how they tie that in with, you know, this message about people. Like if you look di di or deeper, how different people have differences and like, we're not all the same. And that's a good thing. Like if we were all the same, then none of us would be different. And like how they used uh, Poppy who thinks everything has to be one way. Like everything has to be, you know, pop and happy. And that's, and then that's how The Rock ends up seeing it. And both of them are basically the same side of the same coin where they both see things as it has to be one way. Otherwise it's not good. But then the whole message is that all of these different people, all of these different musics, they can all coexist together and it makes for an even better world when people use their differences and use them together. Now, sure, maybe they were kind of going a direction, you know, that was trying to say something else socially, but overall, I think as it is, even if the filmmakers didn't intend for it to be there is even a there's a biblical message behind there where we're all pieces like 
like obviously it's not talking about Christianity, but like there is Christians truth to be found. Like we all serve different purposes. Not we're not all the same and our differences can be worked together to make one body, uh, which is the church. So just something that I kind of pulled away. Like there is, of course, there's always that one line in these Hollywood movies that kind of like make you go, ugh. like I think it was, uh, the rock trolls dad just like just let them all be what they want to be it's like oh gosh can we go one movie without throwing some stupid uh, dumb one liner in there that just basically says go do whatever you want to do which is so societally damaging but the rest of the movie actually had a lot of good to say so i was able to overlook it not a great movie but it was good so that's my like five minute review of the first two trolls movies so now let's go into my five minute review, hopefully, or maybe a little longer, of Trolls Band Together, which I thought wasn't as good as Trolls World Tour, but I liked it more. I think there were th some factors that made me like it more. First off, the music, once again, is pretty good in this movie. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe I need to have like a Trolls uh, soundtrack ranking. I don't know where Trolls Band Together would fall, but there were some really good songs and then some other songs that weren't as good. So it's like, you know, a mixed bag with the, you know, the songs. The movie is really good for the most part, both in what it's trying to say and, you know, the conclusion. And overall, I liked it. And it's like, okay, I'm just saying and because I'm coming to it, but ba 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 I can't tell if the beginning sequence of this movie is like using rainbows just because they're trolls and they're colorful and that's the point. It, But it almost just, it's like the whole beginning sequence, like nothing else in the movie really resembles that. But it's like the beginning sequence is like this marriage ceremony of the king and Bridget. And it's a heterosexual relationship. And there's just all these rainbow flags and rainbow imagery all around town. It's like, were the filmmakers trying to make this like a pride moment? Or is that just because the trolls just colors and rainbows are just part of everything they do? Like, I, it, it really seemed like they were trying to make a pride statement. But I was just so confused because like, this is a boy... Bergen and a girl Bergen getting together. What does this have to do with the pride flag or whatever? I was I was like, what? Okay, whatever. And then there was like nothing else about any of that, you know, in the movie. So there was a, there was like no, at least that I could tell, no, you know, weird messed up gender, you know, relationships. It was all just Poppy and Branch are together. They're you know, boy, girl, Bridget and her husband, their boy, girl, like, I, maybe I was missing something, I don't know, <laughs> nothing in this movie outside of just all the rainbows everywhere, which inherently rainbows aren't bad, so I don't know, maybe this movie was trying to be pride, maybe it was, I don't know, too much said on that, I really like the family dynamic in this movie, it's a very pro sibling movie i just love that um being a brother of i have four other brothers having this movie be about four brothers getting back together and you know kind of rejoining each other just just was heartwarming i liked it it's like that's just the kind of stuff that I'm into I like when a movie is relatable to me and that's just very relatable to me like me and my brothers we're not really singers all of us we don't really have a band but we are that boy band we are bro zone me and my brothers so I was able to just connect with this it's like okay yep that's John Dory that's baby branch that brother is that brother yep yep it all lines up just kidding I, I honestly couldn't tell Outside of John Dory being the oldest and Branch being the youngest, I couldn't tell what place the other brothers fell in line. Maybe if I watched it again, maybe I could figure it out. But, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, catchy songs. The jokes in this movie are, like, 
the first movie was just like dumb baby poop humor. This movie just like gets really, really over the top with its adult humor to the point where like, it's like, okay, yeah, it's funny for me as an adult, but like, I don't even know if I would let my kid watch this. Like some of those jokes, like it's, it's, there's so many sexual innuendos in there. Like some kids might get it. Some kids might not. There's no explicit, no specific talk about sex, but like there's so many things in here. It's like, uh, yeah, that's apparent. Like with Bridget and her husband, there's a lot of kissing and then they make comments that are like, if you're an adult, you know, if you know, you know. And it's like, wow, that's in a kid's movie. Why? Just why? Just some off-color adult jokes in this movie. And once again, it has to do mostly with the Bergens. Like, all of the bad jokes, all of the adult jokes are mostly revolved around the Bergens, which are, like, my least favorite part of the Trolls franchise. But at least in this movie, the Bergens aren't, aren't too, too bad. So, overall, yeah. Um, there was actually a lot of humor that I thought was legitimately funny. Uh, some of it was a more adult humor, but some of it just, it just works. It's just funny. I think that's just why I kind of liked this movie and liked Trolls World Tour a good bit more than I liked the first film is because the humor actually started getting funny. It wasn't just stupid. Like, there was a lot of dumb humor, but at least it was at least somewhat chuckle-worthy. And just made this movie a fun, dumb time. Uh, once again, there is a lot of good things with, you know, uh, John Dory. Feels like he has to get the family all together by being this leader and telling them what to do. Telling them what they have to do and trying to seek perfection. Whereas they just kind of want to be there as a family. Like, they just want to have fun and you know, bond as a family group, as a boy band. And John Dory has to let go of his, you know, desire to, you know, make everything perfect for them and realize that they can all work as a unit without him having to micromanage things. And that was cool. I like that. It's a very, you know, there are some heartwarming moments. I like the way it ends. It's not like a super emotional film, but there is a lot of good, you know, heartwarming stuff in this movie, and especially with Poppy finding her long-lost sister. Spoiler, it's in the trailer. Moreover, just, just a lot of good things where it shows how siblings can be, like, best friends. And that's just a good thing to show um, in today's day and age. And I like how self-aware this movie is about today's culture. Like, it's this movie just 100% with the villains just calls out all of the you know, entitled, spoiled, you know, lazy TikTokers out there who think they're going to get rich and famous without having any talent, just getting online, lip syncing, doing lazy, untalented dances and recording it, or just doing random things and trying to get popular. Like the two villains of this movie are literally people that are just two lazy people that have no talent, that mooch off of a troll's talent and become super rich and famous without having to do anything and out, without having to do any work. And it's very comedic. It is hilarious. I love the one scene where the dad, liter it's like a flashback. The dad literally asks his daughter how school was and she just, she just like flips out and is like, stop attacking me. It's like, it just shows how, entitled and spoiled some people are today like you can be on tiktok and not be spoiled you can want to get popular on the internet and not be spoiled but it does showcase how both like people that do find success without being talented and people who don't just have this entitled mindset where they are the star they are everything and the world should revolve around them and it's just great to see a hollywood movie that's like calling people out on you know their their crap and this movie is very pro work it's very pro you know get a job you know do something with your life stop trying to just 
be the star, rich and famous, all this stuff. Like there is a, a character in this movie who is a very underappreciated secretary who she she literally is starts singing the song nine to five and then gets cut off by the spoiled entitled rich pop star teenager that's stealing someone else's talent and she just verbally and even just like she's just verbally abused by this entitled teenager when this nine to five secretary has like a phd does all of the background work is like super smart super clever and just isn't being appreciated for her talents and the hard work that she's putting in behind the scenes and she's just getting so un unappreciated she's just getting thrown all over the place i like that this movie does showcase yes you have to work you have to earn what you get and you know not expecting everything to fall into your lap like there's actually a lot of good things here that you can draw away from and then they do have that one one part of course there's always that one thing that's like oh you should just be yourself do whatever you want to do uh which in this case it's not quite as bad uh basically it's with the villain uh the sister is definitely the villain villain and then her brother is kind of like her tag along and i think they should have gone a different route because basically what essentially you said is you should never let whether it's your family or any of your anybody your friend your sibling try and change you or like like that's not even what was going on the sister was literally manipulating her brother into you know choosing to do illegal harmful activities to other people like it had nothing to do with her changing him or telling him to change as a person it was her basically manipulating him into making decisions to thinking that it was good to do those decisions and then the movie kind of makes it seem like oh she was trying to change it. like no he was listening to his sister who was just trying to help herself she wasn't trying to change him she was just trying to use him she wasn't like she was just 100 percent. it was manipulation rather than you know telling a story of you shouldn't let your family members, you shouldn't just be a yes man uh, to try to stay in good relations with your family. Sometimes you can say no to your family. And that would have been a much better message than saying you should just never listen to your family or let them try and, you know, change. Like, what, what if you had, you know, what if they were trying to change you for the better? What if you were doing something bad and they are trying to help you become a better person? Like, does the does that still apply? Once again, it's the the message should have been don't let your family manipulate you into doing something wrong, not just like it, it was so weird the way that this thing turned out where the the brother's just like I've learned my lesson from now on. I'm not going to let even, I'm not even going to let my family or my sister like I don't know the exact line. Essentially he was saying I'm never going to let them change me from who I am. It's like all like they somehow this movie found a way to fit in that whole just be who I am. Don't try to change me kind of like no. Sometimes people need changing. Like you weren't just inherently good. Like you were making those decisions yourself. And like the movie once again is self-aware. The dude still goes to prison for his crimes because he's still accountable for those crimes it doesn't change because he learned his lesson his sister didn't change him she manipulated him into thinking that what he was doing was going to benefit him and he had to pay the price for that because yeah it was still his choice she didn't change him he was definitely you know doing it knowingly like he wanted that too sure he was manipulated but it was his choice so, once again, that should have been the lesson. Don't be a yes man. Don't be manipulated by your family into thinking you have to do everything and agree with everything they say, just saying good relations with them. You can say no to your family. And even with the trolls, which are much better, uh, you know, much less, uh, you know, manipulative and abusive 
family dynamics, but even there, there was times where they had to, you know, come to terms with the fact that they didn't all agree on everything and they could say no to certain situations and work it out. That's a very much better, you know, message. And I do like that the main focus of the movie is about, you know, brothers and sisters getting along and getting over their differences and learning how to work together as a group, as a family. And that's just good stuff. So I like Trolls Band Together. My favorite Trolls, but not the best. So I give Trolls Band Together a 72% in quality, a 78% in enjoyment for an overall score of 75%. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help you be on the lookout for more videos from Luke Film Boss. Bye.